Hello, everybody. We are back for our second vocal workshop. This one on vocal performance with Elizabeth Shiblo from um, from our area, from here, right? From Glen Mills or Garnet Valley, uh, right here in Delaware County in Pennsylvania. But she's also with the Metropolitan uh, opera chorus so if you want to hear more about liz's whole story um you can watch our first series and she really we went more in depth about um uh, how you know her musical journey and everything and then we had a lot of breathing exercises that you can work on so that is up on youtube and facebook uh, if you just search for rockdale music on either of those uh platforms and you'll be able to hear hear Liz's whole story and um, and get some really good breathing exercises, which is the foundation for all singing as well, right? And performance. I'm guessing you still probably need to breathe while you're performing too, right? So, all right, with that being said, I'm gonna kick it over to Liz and she will take us away for the vocal performance workshop. Sure, sure, sure. Starting out on a great foot, people. Sure, is what I meant to say. So this, uh, for this Zoom conference, I wanted to talk a little bit about auditioning. And uh, there is a definite art to it. It takes practice. It is something that you will want to work on before you start putting yourself out there to uh, local, companies or you know if you want to audition for the school play or if you want to read a monologue or if you want to dance if you want to play the guitar you know a lot of these things will translate into whatever it is you are auditioning for so you book the audition you apply you book the audition you get a call or an email and it says hey we'd love to hear you Here's your audition time, here's the date, and here are the requirements. So now it's on, right? You gotta get yourself together. Right. What the heck am I gonna do? Oh my God, I applied for it and I got it. Now what do I do? So you're going to start, this is a pretty simple step. You're going to start by choosing your audition repertoire, right? So this is the first step. Um, I sometimes get the feeling that a surprising number of young performers don't really think enough about the songs or arias that they're presenting to an audition panel. You want to choose the right rep for you. You have to uh, make sure that it's appropriate for you. I've seen many people uh, who just love to sing something, but they're singing something that is sung by a male in the show yeah. or they're singing something that's sung by an old lady in the show and for your age group you're young so you want to go for the roles and that are age appropriate that someone can see you playing it is very you know you don't want to walk into a room and sing an aria or a song that's sung by a male character if you're a female or mm -hmm. a female character if you're a male uh, so you need to make sure that you're very, very, very careful with knowing your rep and what works for you. So you would want to choose uh, usually three to five. If it's if it's a classic audition, classical audition, it's three to five arias. If it's Broadway, they normally tell you what you need to sing, and it is usually three only three to five measures of something. Hmm. So right. if you are you know, that, that kind of narrows it down for you pretty easily. So the Broadway world is a little bit easier to usually negotiate because they say, we want to hear you, but you need to only sing these, this, this five bar excerpt. Right. So that's easy. They told you what they want to hear. Yes. If you're a classical singer, you need to choose three to five arias, or sometimes they allow a Broadway piece. Sometimes they allow a song. It kind of depends on the company. So you want to, uh, make sure that you're choosing the rep that's perfect for you. This is the first time these people are seeing you. So it's important that you know what you have to offer and know what your product, what your product is, because really you are a product. You yeah. are going to 
be, you know, people are going to be advertising you. They're going to be selling tickets because of you. So this is, this is very important. Yeah. Um, attire. One of our, Let's one of our former students, one of our former students, actually a whole family of them were on Broadway, um, doing the school of rock on Broadway. Oh my gosh. She, was, yes, yes. She, she she played Summer in the School of Rock on Broadway, but actually Ava, she like auditioned. She was auditioning to play bass in the School of Rock band. Here, this is the this is the best story. This this just shows commitment by by Ava. She she didn't play bass at all. Was gonna audition to play bass in a summer. Bought a bass. I did, I taught her and we just did, you know, we did a lot of lessons. We did a lot of them, but she just practiced for hours a day. She got it down. She learned how to play bass well enough to like, so, you know, she knew that she had to learn a couple songs, right? So she learned those couple songs from soup to nuts perfectly. And she went and auditioned. Now she did not get the role of the bass player, but she got a different role because her product, her look fit a different role. And a pair, and so she did the traveling uh, school of rock first, and then apparently Andrew Andrew Lloyd Webber, who is you know who wrote School of Rock, saw her do the traveling thing and said, "No, he wants her on Broadway." So I guess the second cast of it, she she was on Broadway for um, until it, I think until it closed, and so because it's closed Whoa. on Broadway, and she was also Matilda in Matilda on Broadway. So she's a she's. They're they're a great great family that really committed to to the Broadway you know the Broadway life, which yeah, is what you have that, to do. Yeah. That's what and you have to do, right? That that's that's actually a quite an amazing story. Yeah, and uh, just that, that you know that that the preparation thing is something that I'm going to touch upon later great. in my talk. But let me get back to attire. Ooh, so yes. your clothing. Right. Your clothing, your, your, the way you present yourself. So um, this is your first impression, guys. You walk into the room, it's your, you're making your first impression. Most of these people you will have never seen you before. They've never met you. They're considering hiring you for something or you know, they're considering you know, having you perform for them and represent them. So this is a big opportunity for you. You always want to choose appropriate attire. It doesn't matter what genre. You're auditioning in rock, pop, jazz, classical. You should look presentable and clean. Uh, you should not be wearing something that has stains on it. You should not be wearing shoes with holes in them. You should, you know, wash your face, wash your hair. Uh, hey, I showered. For, I showered for you guys this morning too. See, so there you go. You know, you can't Thank smell God. me through Zoom, but you know. No. <laughs> and sniff zoom that would be amazing uh you want to make sure that you choose your your shoes and your attire prior to the date of your of your audition or your performance guys uh you don't want you're going to be stressed you're going to be excited you're going to be anticipating the audition so that's one thing that you don't want to have to worry about the day of make sure that you're choosing your your outfit, trying it on, walking around in your shoes. You know, can I sit outside of a room for an hour or so and wait in these pants? Are they not too tight? Do I look good? You know, things like that. I, as a young singer, made many mistakes with shoes. Shoes were a big thing for me to figure out. I thought that I could wear a big heel. I was nervous as heck. And I went into the room and my legs were shaking. I looked like a nervous, terrified flamingo because my, <laughs> I couldn't get any footing. So I had to learn that for me, my nerves translate into my legs. Right. And I get knock kneed, a little knock kneed. Mm -hmm. And I need to wear a flat. Not everybody can wear a heel. Not everybody needs to wear a heel. You need to wear whatever you're comfortable wearing. It could even yeah. be a clean sneaker depending on the audition that you're going for. You just I tend to stay, I tend to wear, stay away from the heel too. You know, I tend yeah, to stay away. I don't wear, yeah, I don't wear my. You can get really hurt. I don't wear my stilettos on stage. No, I, uh, you know, I, I save that for yard work. Um, Perfect. You know, it aerates the lawn while you're going around. You're aerating. I'm sure the neighbors love. That's right. You can aerate your lawn with your with your uh, stiletto, Jared. That's a dad joke. That's a dad joke for all the kids out there. <laughs> so this is something that's in your control, guys. Choosing your outfit, 
that's it. That's in your control. You can look, you look good. You feel good. That is a, that is something that will just kind of, as you enter the room, the, the auditioners will be able to feel that. And I do, I do urge you all to make eye contact and say hello when you walk in. A lot of people are nervous, they're scared, and they don't realize that they're kind of looking down, they look nervous, they look awkward. Just walk in, look at them and say hello. Be confident, try to you know, show them that you're, you're a performer, that's part of performing. That's the ba- a basic thing for performers is mm-hmm. to make eye contact and command a room. Engage, right. So, Yes, engage, engage your audience. So I have some tips here as you're preparing for your audition, some do's and don'ts that I put together. Great. It is important guys that you are passionate about the songs that you're singing or performing. If you don't like them, it's going to show. If you're not into it, it's going to show. So make sure that you're choosing things that you love that resonate with you. Otherwise, you're not gonna, it's, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna work. And the panel is going to see that. So make sure that you work with your coach and your music teacher to, to choose things that are appropriate for you and that you love. Uh, you wanna make sure that you can sing or perform the piece very well. You cannot go in there with, you know, just kind of having it somewhat learned or not having worked out your body movement or how you're going to stand. These are all things that need to be worked out prior to walking into that room. You need to remember that there are hundreds of people trying to get one job and it is fiercely competitive in the music industry. I cannot stress that enough. Mm-hmm. So you really, 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 must be prepared and must love what you're doing. And those are two things that, again, are under your control. A lot of things in the music industry are out of your control. You can't make somebody hire you. You can't make somebody love you. So these are all things that you should be, you know, working. These are things you can control when you're kind of, you know, preparing your audition package. Uh, you, again, I go back to make sure that the rep that you're choosing is appropriate for you. I cannot stress that enough. Uh, oh, yes. Here, I'll, I'll tell you uh, how I dealt with this. So a lot of people say yes to roles or yes to, to gigs, thinking that they can sing the entire role. Just because you can sing a song or an aria from the opera or show does not mean that you can sing the entire role. So for instance, when I was 23 years old, somebody offered me a role in a Mozart opera. And because I could sing the heck out of the arias, I took, I took the, I I took the job. I accepted the job. I flew overseas and I ended up injuring myself because the role as a whole sat too high in my range. I was singing too high for too long of a period of time over and over and over again. And I injured myself. I recovered and you can recover and you will recover, but going through something like that as a young singer was so debilitating. So I cannot stress enough, just because you can sing a song from that Broadway show does not mean you can sing the entire role or get through the entire role. You have to look at the whole entire thing. Mm. So make sure when you're choosing pieces, you know that you can sing the whole role. Oh gosh, I love this song from this, from this Broadway show but uh, I'm not sure I can sing the whole thing. Let me get the score and see if I can do it. Mm. So that's something that I cannot stress to you enough. Yes. Uh, D, 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 D. Uh, have your, I, I said this earlier, have your teacher and your coach approve the list that you're submitting or whatever you're looking to uh, sing. Make sure that you've cleared it with them and that you've worked on it with them. That is something yeah. that is important. Oh. Our vocal coach, Cecilia, is on the call, too, and I think she likes that one, oh. right? Cecilia, Hi, Cecilia. <laughs> Cecilia is, she She very much agrees with that, right? She, get your teachers approved, yeah. right? <laughs> yes, yes. A lot, you know, people love to think, I think you'll agree, Cecilia, people love to sing certain things, but it might just not be appropriate for them. Mm. Right? Yeah. So here's some don'ts. Those were some do's and here are some don'ts. 
don't ever sing something that's beyond you, technically. You need to sing things that you can sing right now with no problems. Don't sing something that you think you'd be good at singing in a year or five years or two years or 10 years. You need to sing things now that you're good at and that you can sing. Uh, I say this because people get discouraged if they take on things that are too hard for them too early. And I do not want to see that happen. Start with things that you can sing now. And that's what you want to present and present it well. So also, because I've done it, so I'm going to tell you not to do it. <laughs> don't list something that you don't want them to choose, guys. Guess what? <laughs> They're going to choose it because it happened to me. <laughs> Numerous times, I thought, you know what? I've got five arias on my list. I've got five songs. They're not going to choose this one. No way. Guess what? They're going to choose it. <laughs> I'm telling you. So make sure that everything you offer, you're ready to sing. Yes. Don't, don't, and you don't want to walk into a room being nervous that they're, that they're going to choose something that you, that's like some, again, something in your control. Don't choose something you can't, don't put something on your list that you can't sing. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to um, mental and physical kind of anxiety nerves that you might have before you, you, you go into an audition. So I'd like to start by saying that being nervous in an audition is completely normal. If you're not nervous, you probably have some secret superpower that I'm going to need you to tell me about because I don't, I've, I've never met anybody, even big stars who don't have some kind of of nerves yeah. before they go out there. A lot of it is, is excitement, it's anticipation. It's normal, it's human, it's okay. So they happen, the nerves happen to everybody. Uh, the most successful musicians out there experience nerves, even after years of practice hun and hundreds of auditions and being so solidly prepared. So, yeah. Being nervous has nothing to do with your ability and it has nothing to do with your potential to be a good musician. So please try to remember that as, as young, as young singers. Yeah. Nerves are normal and it's okay. You should be nervous. It's exciting. You're about to pour your heart out to somebody. Right. Whether it's, it's strange, with a car or drum set. In um, general, it's a strange thing to, to get on a stage and perform something in front of a bunch of strangers whose job it is, is to judge, judge your performance, right? That's it. I talk about that, that, that with my buddies all the time. Like what a strange thing we put ourselves through, right? To like, like they say public speaking is, public speaking is people, a lot of people fear death de or fear public speaking more than death, which is yes, like- they do. They and do. we're doing, and we're doing that like, we're, it's, I, I would say public speaking is actually more difficult than singing, performing, because public speaking, people are hanging on every word, right? They're watching every motion they're doing. When we perform, they just get immersed in the performance, right? Yes. Public speaking yes. is a different, a different thing. So I would say performance is easier than public speaking, but if you, but if you're the front person of a band, you're going to perform and you're going to do public speaking and you have to get very comfortable with um, also your, your public speaking, your, your, your front man or front woman persona as well. Right. Is that like, I have a different voice and a different like dialect when I, when I perform and I like, you know, I, it's, I, you say like the front man voice is always different where you're like, how's everybody doing today? Like, it's like this sing songy trying to get people hype um, type of voice too. So there are, there's nothing more vulnerable than putting yourself, standing up in front of thousands of people and singing or playing an instrument. And I mean, you're just really kind of, this is, this is you, this is particularly for me, singing is, is even more so like that because the, the instrument is inside of your body mm. and uh, you can't blame a string or a, you know, bad piano key or a, you know, a new stick, a new drum stick. Right. You know, it, this is you. This is, it's one of the most vulnerable things that you can do. Um, singing in, in, to me, for me, in my opinion. So. Right. It's, uh, it's, it's not easy guys. You're <laughs> making yourself vulnerable and you're opening yourself up to criticism and, 
rejection and, and those things are hard, but that's why you have to love it. You yeah. have to absolutely love it and be doing it at the end of the day for you, for yeah. yourself and for nobody else. So let me get back to my tips. Sure. Okay. So be over, be over prepared y'all <laughs> sing it 40 times. Sing it for your mom, sing it for your dog, sing it for your coach, have a mock audition, walk in and walk out with your friends, introduce yourself, wear the shoes that you're going to wear, wear the outfit that you're going to wear. You have to practice. This is all, the auditioning part is, is a big part of, you know, again, I think I mentioned this last time, you can walk into a practice room and sing so well, it's great. And then walk out and leave and get into a car and go home. But, you know. There's a, you have to present yourself as a product, as a, as a package. So you got to work on it, work yeah. on it. My okay. students, my students all know this one. I say it all the time. I say, um, don't practice till you get it right. Practice till you can't get it wrong. Right. That's, exactly. Right. Because when nerves set in, you, you might make a mistake. You might yeah. forget a word, you right. might, but that leads me into don't panic. If you make a mistake, guys, don't <laughs> panic. Keep going. This is a sign of a smart and educated performer. Mm -hmm. Live performances are never perfect. I'm here to tell you. You can listen to recordings all you want till you're blue in the face. It is never gonna sound like that. If you're listening to things that are recorded in a studio, they sound amazing. It is, you never measure yourself against a recording. You have to go and see and hear things live. Yeah. They're never perfect. And that's kind of the beauty of it. It's never the same. It's never perfect. You're never going to feel the same. It's never going to sound the same. And that's what the one thing that I actually, one of the big things I adore about live, yeah. live performing. Who's seen, I've seen people who's seen who the make, new, uh, who's seen the new Hamilton uh, on Disney plus. Uh, anybody uh, watch, uh, anybody watch Hamilton? Yeah. yeah me me I too. Did. Yeah. I, I watched that one too. So, it was great. It was great, right, Sam? Um, oh yeah, I watched it with my mom, and she's obsessed with Hamilton. <laughs> nice, cool. nice. But well, so that was all cut together by from multiple, multiple performances, right? So you watch that, and you make it. You, it may look like it's one continuous performance. No, 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 no. That was probably ten to twenty different performances that they chose. Like, I mean. Not any spoil. I don't want to do any spoilers, but there's one part where like some spit gets stuck on the lip of uh, of King George, right? And like one of my students was like, "Ah, oh, man, that was kind of gross." And I was like, "Yeah, but they chose that performance that the like the spit got stuck on the lip because it sh it it played to the character very well, right? Is that like he's out of his mind and he's losing his mind and he he can't even right. control like his own saliva, right? So that was uh, I thought it was a it was a really like good artistic choice for them to actually. Oh, so I mean, I it's something we're talking about now, right? So it worked. I wish you could show more of that. Yes, I was singing a solo in an opera one night, and my train got stuck in a giant gondola that was being pulled across the stage. I had to sing my solo <laughs> while my skirt was caught in a gondola, and I was slowly walking off the stage, and it was pulling me down, and I was going like this as I was singing, and then I exited. Yeah. It was horrible. <laughs> Things that happen in yes. live theater. You never know what's going to happen. You have to keep going. Yes. So there you have it. Even when your skirt's stuck in a gondola, guys. Right. <laughs> keep singing, sisters. Right? Okay. So uh, take your time when you walk into an audition room. I've watched a lot of people. I, I, I uh, always volunteer to handle the auditions at the Met, at the Metropolitan Opera House. And I watch some of these singers walk in and they are so nervous that they forget to take a moment to gather themselves. Right. You need to take a second, look down at the floor, breathe, think about your intention, think about what you want to relay, give yourself a pep talk, say you've got this, and then you look up and the pianist will, if it's a good pianist, and most of them are, 
uh, when you when you when you go to auditions, people usually make sure that they have a, a good pianist. They will know that you're ready to start, or you can just look at them, or you can just nod, and they will they will start. So those are some mental mental tricks, and then physical. So shaky hands and legs. That's just pent up energy. I always think of it as just pent up energy and excitement. Yeah. It's not nerves. It's pent up energy and exciting. Move. Uh, you know, lift your legs up, shake your arms out, do some shoulder rolls, you know, um, march in place. I've seen a lot of singers that I work with do jumping jacks, push-ups, you know, a couple minutes before they go on stage. Do all this knowing that you can't immediately walk out on stage, though. You want to be able to catch your breath. So do it a couple of minutes before you enter the audition room or go out to perform. You know, you want to, like, run on and be like, sorry, I just did 20 push-ups. That's... Yeah. They're not here to, they're not going to hire you based on your push-ups. They actually say okay. that about joining meetings too, is like, you should make yourself like do big motions before you go into like a meeting with person. Cause it makes you, it, it actually makes you feel bigger. Right. Yes. It's just by yeah. making big motions. Like if you're, if you're just sitting there like this before, you're not going to really, you're not going to really, you're not taking up much space as a performer, take up as much space as you can um, inhabit. Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, breath support. A lot of people have super shallow breath, especially singers. Uh, you need to, uh, you know, you do your breathing exercises. In our last uh, performance, I showed you the straw thing and the noisemaker thing and, you know, expanding your breath, panting like a puppy. You know, whatever you want to develop, you have to figure out what works for you. So this is all going to be trial and error. But when your breath is shaky, you have to remember, you have to just think about your support. And that's something that your voice teacher, Cecilia, would work on you, work with you, yeah. work with you on, work on <laughs> with you. So, you know, have all these things in your, in your arsenal when you, when you uh, get out there. And always stay technical. If you start to get super nervous, don't, don't freak out. Just go back to, you know, back to your breath, back to the words, back to your intent. Try not to panic. I know it can be very difficult. And posture, like Jared mentioned, always, you know, lift, lift up your chest, use your hands, gesture, make sure that you're, that you're filling the room, that you're, you're showing them, you know, your power. That's, yeah. uh, that's what they want to see in performers. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'm going to close now with Learn to recover from poor auditions and keep auditioning, guys. You're not going to nail every audition. It's not going to happen. I know you want to, and I know that you put a lot of pressure on yourself to be perfect. Uh, that is not reality. So everybody has bad auditions. No one gets every part they audition for. Uh, I know it can be recovering to uh, challenging to recover from disappointing auditions, but the quicker you can get back in the saddle, the easier it will be the next time you go. This is a riding a bike thing. This is a playing a new video game thing. When you are learning something new, you don't quit just because you weren't good at it the first couple of times. You, you, you keep going. You keep getting back in the saddle. You get back on the horse. You get back on the bike. Like you log back into the video game. You keep trying. And then, you know, once you familiar, familiar, familiarize yourself with how the audition process works, you will perfect your audition day process. And you may even start uh, enjoying it, you guys, because you'll become good at it. You'll become a good, you'll become a good auditioner. It will feel great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, this is one last thing I wanted to say. Please don't take someone else's opinions to heart. Try to look at everything that somebody says to you as constructive criticism. Yes. And not a personal assault. Right. Uh, That's this a is a one. business. Yeah, this is a business based on opinions, y'all. Uh, there are. There's no science. There's no facts. There's nothing that we can prove here. Um, everyone, some people are going to love you. Some people are going to be, eh, and some people are not going to like you. That's just, you know, you can look at the singers that you love. Your friend might love Ariana Grande and you think, oh God, she's so bad. That's, that's performing. That's music. That's a life in music. That's a life in performing.
Yeah. So you have to have confidence in your talent. You have to love what you do. You have to be your biggest cheerleader. Yes. And you have to believe in yourself because nobody or nobody else will. You have to say, I am, I have it. I've got it. I'm good at this. This is, this is, this is, um, I have something to offer the world. So have confidence in your talent and don't forget to reward yourself for a good audition. You know, have a little, go for, um, uh, a, I don't know, go for a celebratory swim, have a, you know, maybe have an extra snack that night. Uh, Go to, take a nap. Whatever you need to do to kind of oh, that sounds yourself. good. I think Sam's going to take a nap after this too. Sam's definitely going to take a nap after this. <laughs> um, even if you don't get the part, it doesn't matter because the key is to look look at every audition as an opportunity to get better. Yes. And to share your talent with people. Yes. Not everybody can do this. People are people. Pe- the people that are hiring you want you to do well. They're looking, they're looking for you to do well. They're, they're rooting you on. It might not seem like that, but they are. They're dying to hire you. So those are my tips, guys. That's great. Any questions? I love the constructive criticism part yeah. of, of yeah. it. It's like, make sure you're also, um, that just make sure that you, you are really uh, taking into account who is giving that criticism as well too especially with the yeah. internet today and you've got trolls you know we, all of you are playing you are doing pretty small performances now but as you get older and you get better you're gonna see there's gonna be some criticism that um a critic you know online everybody's a critic now online so they can all say don't pay attention to <laughs> to a lot to to most of that stuff right somebody who really cares about you getting better will tell you personally um, somebody who just wants to troll you and bring and break you down will go and type it online, right? Like that's the and there's some people's jobs that that's what that's that's their job and you know, but not for and me. really. You have to you have to really think where you know a troll. They are many of them are frustrated humans. Yes. They're very unhappy. They're sad and they're jealous. Mm-hmm. And it's easy for them to hide behind a computer screen. So you know, when you after you've done an audition, if you you know talk to your talk to your teacher, talk to your friend, right. talk to your you know your parent if you have supportive parents, talk to the people that will support you yes. and will bring you along. And Don't that's, listen you know, to all the outside voices. We as teachers, we we critique you, right? That is our job is to critique you, but our job is to critique you to get you better. Right. We're not doing the critiquing to to break you down and like, you know, it's it's always okay, we could do this to make you get to the next level. That's what we're that's what we're doing as teachers. So well good. Let's let yeah, let's open it up for questions. Raise your hand and then I'll and I'll uh if and I will unmute you if you would like to ask a question. Cecilia's got a question. Cecilia. I love that right, name. Ask go ahead. All right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for a really informative clinic. I really enjoyed it. Um, My question is, um, I have a lot of students that audition for, you know, their middle school or high school musicals and uh, things outside of school, too. And um, I always tell them, you know, the don't even try to not even think about too much like, oh, when I get this role, it's going to be so awesome. I just say, you know, go in and do your job. And I say something that my college teacher would always tell me is to trust your training. Whenever you get yeah. nervous, trust your training. Even if you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do this. Just look at your training. Look at how hard you worked, right? Um, but a lot of my students feel really bummed out if they don't get the role that they want, which is most of the time, right? There might be 20, you know, everybody wants the lead, right? So there might be like 20 kids auditioning for one part. And I always say, you know, it's not always about, you know, um, you know, of course it's, it's about, you know, every, you know, whoever gets it did a good job and they deserve the part, but it's not only about, um, you know, how well you do at your audition. Sometimes it's like, especially in schools, this person deserves the turn 
or um, you know, we're looking for someone that's a certain height because the uh, you know their counterpart is the, you know is this tall, and we want someone who's around the same you know right. those kinds of things. You have to take those into account. That's outside of your control. You can't be like, okay, I'm going to grow three inches or I'm going to shrink three inches, um, and you shouldn't hold those things against yourself. But still, I was wondering if you have any advice on how to, like you said, like how to recover from an audition that maybe didn't go well or when you didn't get the part that you wanted? Sure. I think that uh, it's so hard. Yeah. Uh, I, the, particularly right now, and I see it even happening in the opera world and it never used to be like this. It is very, very much about how you are going to look with your co-star, how you, if you are tall enough, if you are the body type that was maybe described in the, in the original story, hmm. uh, these are all things that are out of your control. There is only one thing that you can control and that is your, your voice, your, you know, your presentation. If you don't get that part, there are other parts. If you don't, uh, you know, book the job, there are other jobs. It is something that you need to do, I think, for you. So instead of going into it and saying, I want the job, I'm going to go after the job. How about go in and say, you know what, it would be great to get the job, but how about I just work on my posture today? Or how about I just work on how I walk into the room? Mm -hmm. How about I just work on, you know, how I say hello? Or, you know, little tiny things that are going to, you know, in months and weeks and years from now, really kind of add up. Yeah. So, you know, the recovering from a bad audition or not getting the job is, you're not the only one who's going through it. You know, there are everyone else who didn't get the job is feeling the same exact way. Right. And... If you are looking to make a lot of money in the music industry, I am here to tell you that it's just not going to happen. <laughs> you, yeah. if, if, if you're in this, if you want to do this for your life, if you want to do this as a job, you are, don't do it because you want to be famous because there's only 0.00001% of people out there who ever become famous. Right. And I would also like to say to young performers and singers and musicians, it's not just about your talent, guys. You, there are politics involved. Uh, many times there's donations and money involved. Uh, a lot of it runs much deeper than, God, that girl can really sing. Mm -hmm. Or God, that kid can really dance. Or my goodness, that person plays that violin so beautifully. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. So well, I think with like, can, don't, take it, don't take it personally. You right. really have to try to learn to not take it personally. And that is hard and it takes work. I still take it personally when I don't get solos. <laughs> I get upset. Yeah. Yeah. Don't work. Work. <laughs> yeah. Of yeah. course. We, you know, we all want the job. We all do, but do it, you know, look at it as a, as a, as a, as a stepping stone, as a, as something that, you know what, here's what I can do better next time. Yeah. Or you look at who they hire and you say, you know what, I'm not six foot tall or God, I look terrible with the tenor or my God, the, you know, they, of course they're not going to hire me. I, you know, can't fit. This is a big thing in the classical music industry. They don't have a lot of money to be working on costumes, so they try to find somebody who's a similar size where they only have to tweak little things and they don't have to spend a ton of money. I mean, these are all little yeah. things that you don't even think about that go yeah. into a lot of decisions. So, yeah. you know, it's, I know young kids, they don't, they don't get it, but the more we can talk about these things with them and keep reminding them of these things, I, I feel like the less discouraged they'll, they'll be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so they'll, they'll learn. I yeah. think, and, 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 and what Cecilia, go yeah, no, no, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. And what's what Cecilia was saying too is that, like, you know, you may be also be offered a supporting role, right? In, in, and take the supporting role and do the supporting role Absolutely. as best you can. And why wouldn't you? 
Yeah, because, well, you know, don't don't feel like, you know, you didn't get the lead and you're not going to do it. No, stay. Stay a part of it. You're going to learn from that whole experience or join the stage crew. Just be a yes. part of the be a part of the performance. You're going to learn about how it all works from being inside of it. You don't learn from, from the outside. You learn from the inside. You have to get you in to it. understand. You have to do it. Right. Even you got to be in the room where it happens, right? You do, you have to feel the energy. And I would like also like to add, I cannot tell you how many times I have watched a small role steal the yes. show. Right. Yeah. Yes. There was major opportunity in small roles. Yes. These are, you know, people get, uh, so I know a very famous character tenor who wanted to be a romantic lead all the time. And he started really super young and was so just, he was a, he's a friend of mine, was so discouraged. You know, I don't, I don't look the part, I'm a little short. Um, maybe I'm a little too overweight and you know, no one wants to, 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 to hire me as the romantic lead. And he started getting, getting the character roles, the funny character roles. And he's making millions of dollars and loving his life. So, you know, whatever, however you can get on that stage to share your joy and your art, do it. Even if it's behind stage, yeah. just get into that world. However you can. There are mm -hmm. so many roles in theater. And like when you talk about lighting, you talk about sound, you talk about makeup, costumes. It's... Yeah. And look, there's, there's, there's all of those, those are paid positions. So when we say there's not money in, in, in the, well, there's money. It just might not be huge money is what you're sure. saying. You can get, yeah. you get jobs, you get jobs and you yeah. can make a living. Not, there, I mean, right? You won't be making millions unless yeah. you're 0.0001% of the right. performance world. And I hope that you will be, yes. I support you, I will be there for it. I want to, don't forget us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> don't forget us. <laughs> You call, you call oh, Uncle Jack. Sam, looks like Sam has a question. Go oh, ahead, man. Sam. Um, uh, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I know, well, I think I'm learning how to take constructive criticism, but it's hard. Like, have any of you guys have any experience with uh, struggling to take constructive criticism in a way? And, yeah. yeah. Because <laughs> I also tend, because... I'm, I'm I'm getting better at handling it, but at the same time, it can it's a little, you know, ups, it can get a little frustrating sure. at times. Yes. So I think we all, I mean, Sam, that you, what you just said is everybody. We all have egos, right? We these these little these things we call egos, and no matter what you do to try and to try and stifle your ego it exists <laughs> it's always gonna be there right so you just kind of have to learn that that's a part of you like the ego and the ego is what gets hurt by constructive criticism you have to recognize that that's just one part of your personality and when you feel that like hurt pain for me i just go that's just my ego stop listening to the ego that's what i that's what i do i mean Elizabeth and uh, and Cecilia might be able to give you some experience, or or Rishi or Hannah as well. For sure, I have um, had really horrible things said to me uh, since I was a flautist and I was six years old and trying to uh, become a musician or a performer or an actor, whatever whatever your thing is. Uh, it is again, it's uh, it's it's practice, Sam. Every time somebody says something that upsets you or bruises your ego or makes you feel less than, you need to really uh, say thank you and uh, take what you want from it and then let the, let the rest of it go. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a lot of criticism are just people's opinions and yeah. You know, you can thank them, say thank you, thank you for your opinion, and, uh, you know, process it, and do not try not to let it ruin your day or discourage you, because again, a lot of criticism isn't fact, it's just opinion. That's good. Elizabeth, has, that's really good, because I'm, I'm not as good at that. 
honestly, what I do, Sam, is you need to learn, I, Jared. I re- I I will retreat and go and lick my wounds and not talk to anybody <laughs> for a little bit. So, and that's not the right way to do it. But that's just, and I know, but like that does work for me. Is that like I just know that like I just need to remove myself from it. Because I, you know, I'm. You're not going to change somebody's opinion by arguing with them either. So yeah, that doesn't no, help. You, no, it doesn't. And you know what, Sam? You have opinions about that person, I'm sure. Yes. Right? Yeah. So just I say I to do. yourself. Yeah. Right. So you just say to yourself, you know what? Thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, give yourself time to lick your wounds. Yeah. I give you two hours tops. And then it's time to move on. Yeah. Write it down. I did a lot of journaling when I was a young performer. Here's what happened. Here's what they said. Here's how it hurt. Now, here's how I'm going to, you know, move on. Here's what I'm going to work on. Here's, you know, use it as, use it as fuel. Yes. Yeah. Trying to make yourself more powerful, make yourself better. That was a great question, Sam. Really it great was question. It was, And that's question. something that we struggle with into adulthood. Oh, Cecilia, do you have something to add there? Go ahead. Oh, uh, you're muted. Girl, you're muted. There we go. Uh, I just wanted to add a, a, a little thing to that is that if it still bothers you after a day or two, bring it up with your teacher. Ask yeah. them what they think, right? Someone who you trust, who's going to give you honest feedback. Um, you know, if you don't have a teacher at the moment, then um, talk to someone else who's, you know, in, in your profession or um, someone who's going to give you honest feedback about it. And they might be able to interpret what that person said in a more constructive way. I think a lot of times people just want to say something to you. You know, you've been on stage and they want to think of something to say. They want to be part of it too. Yeah. And uh, sometimes that can lead to some misguided comments. I've had people, you know, say really inappropriate things to me, uh, or, you know, comment about what I'm wearing or how I look, which is like, okay, you know, like, if you have something really negative to say or something that would make me uncomfortable, just keep it to yourself, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah. if it's about my voice or about the way that I act on stage, I always would bring it up to my teacher or, you know, one of my colleagues or someone else in the band. Uh, like, hey, what, what did you, did I, did I mess that up? Was that okay? And you know, someone that I trust would give me honest feedback and say, yeah, you know, maybe that joke was a little off color that you told between songs or, you know, um, that skirt you wear just doesn't fit you right. Or, um, you, you know, sounded like maybe you hadn't had enough sleep that night, but you know what? Don't, don't take their comment to heart. Like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And we, and we all have, we all have bad days, right? We're going to sometimes just going to have a bad day. Of course. I'd like to piggyback on what Cecilia said about going to your friend or your coach or your teacher or your parent. This is why it's important for performers to develop a support system. It does not have to be big, but you need to develop some kind of support system. Your family, your, a family member, a friend, um, um, an online community, some, some kind of, of, of support for you as a young performer or a young athlete, I mean, really anything where you're putting yourself out there and opening yourself up for criticism is you need a, a good support system. So find those people and uh, you know rely on them, lean on them. Also, when you make yourself vulnerable, it, may, it can make people uncomfortable. When you are good at something, it can make people uncomfortable. Yeah. When you have the cojones, the uh, nerve to go and do something like play an instrument or sing or tell or be a comedian, which is one of the hardest jobs in the world, I think. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, people get uncomfortable. They get jealous. It makes them uncomfortable. And a lot of times they end up being mean. Uh, I've, I've, I see it every day. I see it every day in my workplace. It's just, um, it's, it's not usually about you. It's about them. Mm-hmm. So whenever somebody says something mean to me or something that I find very insulting or upsetting, I say, you know what? This isn't about me. Something happened. Something's going on in their life. Something happened in their life. And they're just projecting it onto me. That's yep. another really good way to deal with, with, you know, criticism or somebody being mean to you. A lot of times it really isn't about you, Sam. It's about them. Yeah. 
and they're just projecting it on you or trying to make you feel bad. So bye haters. No, no, no. <laughs> Rishi, you got a question? No, Rishi's going. Is Rishi going? Oh, you have to go now. Okay. See you, Rish. Do you have any questions before you go? No, no. No, nope. I have to go right now. So. All right. Cool. Good to see you. And, oh, did Hannah roll too? Or Hannah, no, you're still here. Do you have any questions? Any question, Hannah? Good. All right. You're good. So it looks like Sam's got one more question, and then we'll and then we can wrap up here. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, I would love to stick around more, but I got to head for my uh, speech class in a couple of minutes. So, oh, I got I'll, you, man. I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Thank you All so right. much for the great Bye, Sam. Show. For your great questions you. and being a part of it. I'll, and thank you, I'll, everybody. I'll see you next week. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know when the next one is. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, everybody, especially... Elizabeth here, and, and and thank you, Cecilia, for being on with us as well. Um, so we can and next up, we're going to start doing some master classes, right? So that uh -oh. so that's going to be the uh, that's when we're going to get you guys all signed up, and and you're going to be doing some of the singing and 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 everything too. So these again, these are on YouTube and Facebook. We're posting these as well. So um, oops, excuse me. So, yep, keep an eye out for when we're going to have our next uh, next masterclass session. And we'll be back in our new studio, soft opening, starting soon. And Friday night is, oh, I forgot about that. Friday night is our virtual showcase on Facebook and YouTube, which is, yeah, it's going to be a bunch of music videos and, and performances. So, definitely... Tune into can that. I put the, can I put the Rockdale website for all of that information, Jared? Uh, probably our social media pages are better to find it than our website oh, right now. Okay. We need to do some website edits. Um, yeah, I'm gonna try that's... to tune into that. I want to see. I want to see that. That's oh, that's awesome. it's 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 such a fun the the virtual performance is like it's so it's so awesome top to bottom. That's everybody, great. all the performances were were just so good. So, um, all right, all was it, everyone. Pleasure. Thank you, Liz. And My we'll pleasure. talk and we'll get everything set up for our master class coming soon. Yeah. Sounds good. Have a great day, everyone. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye.